It's 2020. What with COVID-19, Brexit and trade embargoes with China, suddenly the idea of Aston Martin launching an SUV, well, it doesn't seem so crazy. But make an SUV they must, because if Aston Martin is to survive and weather this COVID-19 related storm, well, it's got to make a car that, well, people actually want to buy. And that's an SUV. After all, you have to ask, why has it taken Aston Martin so long? After all, Porsche has had a roaring success in its hands with the Cayenne, and apparently 73% of existing Aston Martin owners, well, there are other cars and SUV. But I have to say, from where I'm sitting, this is quite an experience. It's quite surreal as I scrape and slide around this really slippery woodland course in an Aston Martin, especially since in this leather lined luxury cabin, it feels like a Aston Martin, as you'd expect. It's actually quite cosseting and enclosed. I'm not really comfortable in this. But you know what? It's getting round okay. It's got plenty of traction and just enough ground clearance to ignore those scraping sounds, please. But yeah, we're through. It's not quite a Range Rover, but for most, it'll do. The good news for this DBX is it is not a GLS in drag. This is not a Mercedes SUV that has just had a bit of bodywork. This is completely new from the ground up. It's all aluminium and the bodywork is a mixture of aluminium and composite panels. So it should be light, right? 2,245 kilograms is still a bit of a bloater. Under the bonnet is Mercedes AMG's twin turbo 4 litre V8 and we know what an absolutely superb engine that is. In this guise it produces 405 kilowatts and 700 newton metres of torque. Now that is good enough for a 0 to 100 km an hour sprint of just 4.5 seconds and a top speed of 291 km per hour. Now the gearbox from the E63 that's where this car borrows its powertrain from, was considered but eventually ruled out because Aston Martin wanted this car to tow 2,700 kilograms. But there are benefits for the nine-speed auto box. Firstly, it's smoother than a dual clutch. And secondly, well, it can still do this. Now the DBX has a few tricks up its sleeve to ensure that it can compete with the very best performance SUVs in its class. We're talking about cars like the Range Rover Sport SBR, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo and the Lamborghini Urus. One of those tricks is it has Aston Martin's new active anti-roll bar technology that stabilises body roll as you enter a corner. Now we're in sport mode now and there is a notable difference but it hasn't cancelled out all roll. Apparently, if it did that, it makes people quite car sick. Perhaps one of the most reassuring things about the DBX is when you're not off-roading, when you're not going flat out on Silverson's stow circuit, it's actually quite comfortable and quiet and a nice place to soak up the miles. And that's kind of important because this is a luxury SUV. So they haven't gone to town, they haven't made it really hardcore and extreme but that's probably because a faster, more hardcore extreme model is on its way later on. Expect that car to be launched in around 2021. So we've left the Silverton circuit now and we are in the natural habitat of the DBX. Yep, country roads. It's here cars like Aston Martin's SUV has to perform. Because let's be honest, few performance SUV owners will ever take their car on track and even fewer will ever go off road. So we're driving the DBX along in the GT mode, which is the default driving mode out of its five or six driving modes. And 
it's comfortable. I mean, it's got a triple chamber air suspension springs plus Bilstein adaptable dampers. And I think Aston Martin haven't gone for outright comfort because they don't want to compromise its athleticism. You know what, along here, this is a typical country bumpy road, a bit like the ones you get in Australia. This thing rides really, really nicely and it's quiet. Turn the silly exhaust off and we're just cruising along with the sort of the deep, meaningful sound of that four litre V8 twin turbo. In fact, I think this car is probably a bit more comfortable than the Rapide I was last in, even though it's riding on huge 22 inch alloy wheels. It seems weird talking about practicality in Aston Martin, but this is a really practical car. It's got a 632 litre boot, it's got 40 2020 split folding rear seats, and it's got enough head and leg room for three adults in the back. They say three adults over six foot four will sit in this car comfortably. Another strange thing about the Aston Martin DBX is behind the wheel, it feels like an Aston Martin, which sounds ridiculous, but a lot of SUVs, they try and actually elevate the driver to such an extent, it feels like you're in a different car. It feels like you're in an SUV, not a car. The Aston Martin is different. It feels quite cosseting in here. It's quite, I don't know, the driver's Basically, it feels like a DBS Superleggera on stilts. There is a glowing emission though, but it doesn't really affect the Australian market yet. And that is that the DBX does not come with any level of electrification yet. Where others are embracing things like mild hybrid and even full plug-in hybrid tech, yeah, we don't know when that's gonna arrive with the DBX, if ever. So that could limit its appeal in markets like Europe. But for us, yeah, this is fine. You just use a little bit more fuel. So there we have it. After a day behind the wheel of Aston Martin's DBX, it's hard not to come away mightily impressed with what they've done. For those in the market for a performance SUV, this must be right at the top of your list. When it arrives in Australia in Q4, Aston Martin will price this DBX from $357,000. Now that's a lot in the marketplace, but for that you get something that looks great, drives beautifully and, well, just feels like a handmade car in a good way.